our special guest, His Royal Highness, the Duke and Princess of Sussex. Well, well, well. I think I've seen enough of this Nigeria trip and I have some questions. So let's head over to Nigeria and see what's really going on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard British Airways Flight 707. Welcome everybody back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. In this recap of the Harkles Nigeria trip, I have two questions mainly. And I think by the end of this video, we should be able to answer these questions. First of all, who does this trip really serve? I know we ask this about every trip the Harkles go on, but at the end of the day, who is this serving? Is it serving Meghan and Harry, Invictus, Archwell, whatever? Or is it serving Nigeria? The second question I have is, who is actually more cringe in this Nigeria trip? Is it Meghan or is it Harry? Put down in the comments who you think it is and we're gonna go and dissect all of this and see what's really going on. Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are beginning a three day visit to Nigeria as part of publicity around the Invictus Games. Now it follows an announcement by Meghan that she's 43% Nigerian after she did a genealogy test. Well, earlier we were joined by our colleague Simi Jolla, Show, Jolla Osho, who joined me from Abuja. Well, this is the couple's first time in Nigeria. They are here because they were invited by uh, the Ministry of uh, Defence. So over the next three days, they will visit Lagos, Abuja and Kaduna. Uh, they're expected to go to a school where they will launch a mental health summit. They are expected to go to a military rehabilitation centre. We have the whole schedule of what they're doing. The couple's visit, not the family's visit. Why don't they bring their children anywhere? I think she just mentioned that they're going to a school with kids? Why don't you take your children, Meghan and Harry? You've never done it. I find it very interesting that they're talking about that she is 43% Nigerian. I just had my genealogy done a couple years ago. What? What are you? 43% Nigerian. No way! <laughs> no Oh my gosh, are you really serious? Yeah. <gasps> there was a time in YouTube when everybody was doing 23andMe and find out your heritage and all of it, and everybody presented their results. Why hasn't Megan ever shown us these results? Where are the results? It has been debunked so many times that she's 43% Nigerian because the way the genealogy tests go is that it tells you what tribe and what ethnicity you're from. And because Nigeria has so many ethnicities, it would have told her that she's Igbo or she's whatever. And that is also what they addressed on the podcast that they're referring to is where a fellow African asked her, what tribe did they say you're from? And she was like, I had to look more into it. And then also expected to meet members of Nigeria's Invictus Games team. Now, Nigeria became the first African country to participate in the Invictus Games last year, and they brought home a gold and bronze uh, medal. The Invictus Games, of course, being the uh, international sporting event co-founded by Prince Harry 10 years oh. ago uh, for Wounded. Okay, co-founded by Prince Harry. I'm so happy she said that because a lot of people have been saying he's the only person and founded it but it was William it was Prince Philip as well who helped each other to do this project after taking a genealogy test that she uh, found out that she was 43% uh, Nigerian something that Prince Harry also mentioned during I thought she was going to say that she revealed she's 43 years old but <laughs> sorry I'm sorry his speech at the uh, opening ceremony. Officials here in Nigeria are hoping this visit could uh, lead to the country possibly hosting the oh. Invictus Games uh, in future years. And if that were to happen, well, this would be just the first of perhaps many more visits by okay. the Duke and okay. Duchess to the country. I thought she was going to say that <laughs> they're hoping that this might be an opportunity for them to get some money. <laughs> I mean, what is Meghan and Harry bringing to the table at the end of the day? By the way, they weren't invited there by the president. In fact, they were invited by the chief of defense staff. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are in Nigeria this weekend at the invitation of the chief of defense staff, Staff General Christopher Gwaben Musa, the country's highest ranking military official, and the itinerary highlights the Invictus mission. So this also plays into how much of an official visit this would have been because they weren't invited by the president of Nigeria. He's there, but he's saying nothing. Simi, what's been the reaction in the media mm -hmm. and in the country That's to this upcoming visit? 
Well, there hasn't been the sort of royal fanfare that you would expect when royals visit uh, a country. Um, you've got to remember that this is a private visit, not a state visit. So the main purpose is to meet the uh, local charities and NGOs that they're supporting. Uh, and remember that Prince Harry is marking the 10-year anniversary of... Sorry. You have to take these words very carefully. This is to support the local NGOs and charities that they're supporting. Supporting where? We have been talking about this for so long. Art12 does not give anybody a check. When they did their tax returns or whatever, they were only showing that they are receiving money. They're never showing where they're putting out money. And it's so funny that they can just name drop NGO, name drop charity, I think that Nigeria is very hopeful that these people have a lot of money and that they will give them some money. You're barking up the wrong tree, Nigeria. The Invictus Games this year, earlier this week, he was in London and attended a Thanksgiving ceremony okay. uh, there yeah. in St. Paul's Cathedral. So that's the main uh, focus of this trip, not the sort of trip that you would expect from uh, senior working members of the royal family. Okay, I'm glad that she said that, though, because I think Nigeria might be confused, generally, that this is not a royal visit. They're mimicking a royal visit, trying to present themselves as royals. And I'm glad she's putting that out there in the news in Nigeria, that this is not a royal visit, but she's hoping for some kind of opportunity for Nigeria. And I don't think that's unfair. I think that they have tokenized Nigeria with the fake 43% and Harry talking about it. And I think that Nigeria is like, well, give us some money. You know what I mean? If you're going to talk about us and you're going to use us, why don't you give us some money for that? But I must say, Nigeria, you're barking up the wrong tree because these people do not write checks. Simi Jolla Osho there. Well, I discuss the visit in a bit more detail with royal commentator Pandora Forsyth. Oh, Pandora. Indeed, it's not a royal visit since they stepped down as senior members uh, of the royal family in terms of working capacity. But it does reflect similarities of a royal visit, of yeah, course. Confusing. It has global attention, which is why we're speaking about it now. And they do have a uh, pool photographer there and a pool reporter and when it's royal a pool photographer and a pool reporter can somebody put down in the comments if you understand what she means by pool i don't know if i'm just like being very ignorant right now but i don't know what a pool reporter is and a pool photographer and when it's royal tours uh, they would have exactly the same thing so everything will be reported on, except this is, of course, an invitation uh, from the chief defence of staff there, um, a private invitation for both Harry and Meghan to not only promote the Invictus Games, but also do uh, various other events whilst they're there. Meghan uh, will be doing a, 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 an event speaking about women in leadership too. So that I'm sure we'll be hearing absolutely everything about what's going on there at the same time. Okay. Hold up. So Megan is going to talk about women in leadership. Why? Especially when you yourself are not exemplary of a woman in leadership. You have had so much opportunity in the royal family, which makes me very sad that she had so much opportunity in the royal family to do this woman thing, this black woman thing, this whatever woman thing, and she never did it. So for me, I don't understand why anyone would listen to anything she has to say. At the same time as the fact that Harry has just left the UK and of course Harry wasn't here with Meghan. So Meghan being there will of course just bring more of a global spotlight on, on the trip. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because, of course, um, that visit to London was much publicised, not least because oh, he didn't have a meeting with his father, the King. No, he didn't, but I'm sure the King will be well aware of where he's going to next. And I think here it just highlights as well uh, the fact that Harry and Meghan have stepped down, but they're still getting lots of global spotlight on them, despite the fact that they're not past the royal family. And for many people who do observe the royal family, perhaps they'll think this is a bit of a missed opportunity, as they had so much potential when they were working members of the royal family. Thank you, Pam. Pandora's box. Thank you. I've uh, been affected by around the world. That's Pandora Forsyth there. So we can first start out with saying that they have been trying to conduct themselves in a very creepy, stalking and obsessive way of looking like royals. They're trying to present themselves as royal family. And it's very confusing to the general public as to whether or not they are royalty coming there or whether they're on holiday. And now the arrival of our special guest, His Royal Highness. 
And whether Nigeria is going to give Archwell money or Invictus money or whether Nigeria is going to try and get some that Invictus money, we don't know. But the point is they are doing business around their titles that they should not be using. Anyway, I talked about the fact that they did not bring their children with them, but they did visit a school. Can I just say that Nigeria has some children's songs that are fire? Okay, anyway, we got to stop. They're gonna claim me. Let me stop. Sorry about that. I just caught a vibe. <laughs> Harry and Megan visited a kindergarten class in Nigeria and got to their feet and joined the class in singing Jump Up and Turn Around. Megan said that dancing was Lilibet's favorite class, adding, maybe it's all the jumping around. So they're gonna mention their kids. They did the same thing in New York, but they never actually bring their kids to say, kids? These are kids. Okay, so we're gonna start weighing the Megan cringe versus the Harry cringe. I talked about whether Megan just makes up stories or if she's aware she makes up stories or what is really going on. Your teachers see that in you and we see that in you. Megan, who recently revealed her Nigerian heritage added, interestingly, so you know it's gonna be interesting, right? <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, sorry. Added, interestingly, so does our daughter, Lily. She's much tinier than you guys, about to turn three. A few weeks ago, she looked at me and saw her reflection in my eyes. She said, Mama, I see me in you. Now she was talking literally, but I held on to these words in a different way. I thought, yes, I do see me in you, and you see me in you? I do see me in you, and you see me in you? And me and me and me and me again? Megan? But as I look around this room, I see myself in all of you as well. <laughs> I cringe because I feel she's being disingenuous. She's not telling a real story. I mean, even if she had said she had on sunglasses or spectacles, girl, and that through the spectacles, which are you know, reflective, that the child saw something. But how can you look into somebody's actual eyes and see yourself like, like it's a mirror? This sounds like a Disney film. Welcome messages from the Sussexes in the visitor book for Chief of Defense Staff General Christopher Musa. Okay, we already talked about him. He's not the president. He's somebody else. Harry says, thank you for welcoming us to your beautiful country. Together, we will heal our troops. Megan signs in and says, with gratitude for the support of the Invictus community and for welcoming me home. <laughs> She's home. A woman who has never identified her ethnicity as black and she is telling these people, Thank you for welcoming me home. I mean, is that a con? Is that a scam? I think we all know that it's very difficult to scam a Nigerian. And I'll just leave it at that. But she's gonna try, which shows that she is so unaware of everything in this world that's going on. I found it really strange that they did not bring their children, as I said before, which would have been such an appropriate thing to do. I almost feel like Harry is first of all insane, but second of all, is not comfortable about that. He seems very edgy about talking to the children when he has to talk about his children. I think honestly that Harry wishes his children were there. I'm just giving him that. Hear this. Doesn't that sound a bit abrasive. I don't know what's going on with Harry. And just the way that Harry turns his head away in annoyance almost when the child says he's the same age as his son, Archie, it's giving me cantankerous vibes. He is acting more childish actually than the children there. So before I show this clip, I wanna ask you a question. When have you ever thought, right, that Meghan was more cringe than Harry? And when have you ever thought that Harry's more cringe than Meghan? I would say that Meghan is often more cringe than Harry, but this time. You see your friend and you will tell us not smiling. What are you going to do? And we're going to check in on them. And you're going to ask them if they're okay. Because it's okay not to be okay.
speaks the truth. Girl, stop like that, man. <laughs> that he's so smart. Stop! He's there like, Excalibur sword, here you are. She already has a mic. Why are you handing her a mic? And then she had to trade mics with him. I'm surprised she didn't actually hold both two mics and be like, hello. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too hard on him. To continue the cringe, because it can't be Harry cringe at the highest level without a comparison to Princess Diana. So Princess Diana also went to hospital and stood over somebody who was injured just in the same way that Harry did. Oh, Miss Anne Harriman was there. Miss Anne Harriman, the messy gay friend of Meghan, who sometimes sides with Prince Charles and sometimes sides with Megan was there in Nigeria as a token black to take pictures of the other token blacks that they're using in Nigeria. So he took this lovely photo and he said, a profoundly powerful moment today at the amputee hospital in Kaduna. He loves black and whites. I mean, it's got to the point now where his photos in black and white are tired and they're done and they're through. That's just my opinion as a wannabe photographer. Nigeria is doing the most. I think Nigeria is a very generous country and they love to entertain people and give people the best life experience. They're giving them gifts. They were treating them like royal family. And it was Megan that was gifted with traditional masks and a series of books about Nigerian heritage, which I feel like she should have read before, but she does mention at some point that she's going to read these books and become au fait with Nigerian culture. To me, and this is where I, this is why they should not have left the royal family because if she was in the royal family, they would have coached her and trained her to read all these things before you go to visit the people's country. They gave Harry this painting of his mother and him. It's not gonna be cringe unless Harry gets an obligatory connection to Diana. And then they gave him a painting of him and Meghan when they got married. That's when they had that multi-million dollar wedding for Meghan and Harry and Prince Charles walked her down the aisle and she was so ungrateful that she left the royal family without telling them that she was getting on a plane to Canada. So there is a painting of that day. I would argue that Harry loves more the Nigerian culture and the Nigerian people than Meghan does. I would argue that Harry is looking for somewhere to belong. He has left his family. I feel he would like to be 43% Nigerian more than Meghan would like to be. Oh, wait, what's going on here? Harry was in Kaduna State and was received by Governor Sani Uba, head of government of Kaduna State in Nigeria. Harry apologized for not bringing Meghan to Kaduna. She's not interested. She is the laziest bones. Like, how are you there for only three days? That's three days of your entire life and you can't even make all three days. There were lovely dancers singing, Prince Harry and Meghan, welcome to Kaduna State. They were treated very well and Meghan couldn't even show up. Let's get to Megan's outfits that she did show up in. Megan wore this outfit, which I thought initially that she was naked in. It was a flesh colored outfit. Everyone remarked that her face color was different from her body color. This is alleged, this is alleged that she came in blackface to Nigeria. What I found interesting is the next outfit she wore was this palm frond dress that was fine. The earrings, girl. She brought out her black people earrings. <laughs> These are the earrings that she wears whenever she sees black people because she thinks they look ethnic, I think, because she wore them in Jamaica. They are worth, though, $3,250. Oh, that's so crazy. There's no diamonds on them. Like, how? The final outfit that I wanted to talk about was that something that somebody sent me. Meghan Markle has shaved her head and she's in a store with Harry in this dress. And I said, shaved her head? Sorry. I thought something was a little bit off with the photo. It is very easy to confuse these kind of dresses. Meghan Markle wore a white sheet into these people's good, good high society. Why? It's not appropriate. Nigeria is a very conservative place, very religious place, and they are all covered up. Even some of them have burqa on and head, head, headdress on. But she's there with her whole entire bare shoulders in a see-through white sheet. Is it on purpose? This is the dress. It's worth $2,995. It's not surprising that the Invictus Games has been compromised. There have been so many reports that Meghan Markle has used the budget to finance these clothing, whilst the athletes have to be buying their own food and drink at the Invictus Games. Thank you so much for watching me. I love you so much. Please put down in the comments all of your thoughts. Don't forget to hit the like button because that really helps the algorithm. Love you. Bye. Why